call-in number. And uh, we are pleased to have in our studio uh, none other than someone most of you have certainly heard before, uh, Sel Dunlap, veteran and member of the Dory Miller Post 915. And uh, we are always pleased to have him. How are you, sir? Great, Cliff. Thank you very much. I'm very always honored to be in your company. Well, you're so kind. I appreciate that. And the thing, you know, if uh, I don't know, I'm sure most of you have run into all the good things that Mr. Dunlap does. <laughs> I have had, uh, I have sent him places for people who needed some things done, and uh, you would think we were back in the military because he handled it. Thank he you, did, Cliff. Yeah, Thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for all you do. So tell us what's happening now. Well, uh, first let me recognize this institution here for what you have done for us in terms of getting our message out to the community. Uh, you have been so critical as an institution, but also as a person because of your environment, your understanding, your sensitivity to how important this is to not just those of us who are for, favored with the benefit of being a member of the Dora Miller Post here in Chicago, but mm -hmm. veterans, period. Mm -hmm. And beyond veterans, any African-American in this country who who not quite clear about what we have done to earn our right to say, do, and be what it is we're capable of being. And, and I, uh, I want to acknowledge that to the point that I've, 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 uh, I'm giving you a, um, a title called Spiritual Drill Sergeant. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Spiritual Drill Sergeant because, one, I appreciate the cadence that you mm. maintain. Uh, I appreciate you trying to keep us marching to add to our ability to get in step with each other. The other is that you don't ask us to take no more of a step than you're willing to take yourself. And I appreciate you. That is so kind I of appreciate you. you. I like that. Spiritual drill sergeant. Yeah, Thank never, you. Never would have thought. Only from you. Oh, <laughs> no, I am, um, on behalf of the, of the leadership mm -hmm. at the uh, Chicago Dora Miller American Legion Post 915, our commander, Harold Tony, Adjutant Willie Hodges, and the rest of the members, it's a, it's a privilege for me to come on and share with you where we are mm -hmm. as we pursue our mission, mm -hmm. ultimate mission, which is to secure the Congressional Medal of Honor for right. Dory Miller. Dory Miller was a World War II hero, performed heroically December 7th, 1941, not being trained on a machine gun that was on that ship. He mounted that, that uh, 55 caliber, shot down no less than six airplanes. Now, there's some debate mm -hmm. going on. First, it was a debate as to whether or not there was even a 50 caliber ma machine gun on that ship uh, or how many planes he shot down. The bottom line is that if he had a BB gun, he shot down some airplanes. He was recognized by the, the Navy with the highest award of a Navy Cross. Since World War II, efforts, very sincere, conscientious efforts have been made to s secure the Congressional Medal of Honor for him. After performing as he did December 7th, he was invited to join a fundraising effort, and he went around the country raising war bonds mm -hmm. and requested the opportunity to go back to the battle. To go back to the battle. <laughs> right, that's right. And he was yeah. killed in 43. Yeah, yeah, 43. Uh, 43. With 646 sailors aboard the USS Liscombe Bay. Yes, sir. The ship was torpedoed and sunk. Uh, but he, uh, w without a doubt, you, you're an expert on this, and of course being with... Well, I'm learning. Oh, yeah, you are. you'll I'm always learning. say that, but you, you know what's going on. Uh, how are we making progress? I know that I know there's a lot going on. I think we've made quite a bit of progress. Yeah, so the too, organi okay. the post mm -hmm. was given an opportunity to address a local elementary school, Jensen Dory Miller, and we went spoke to the young folk, and the reception was tremendous. We um, hosted a essay contest for the students to participate in as a way of further getting them involved with this and understanding. We were given an opportunity for the first time ever to do something that 
the VA hospitals around the country had never done, and that was to host a Dora Miller Day back in June, mm-hmm. June 12th, mm-hmm. at the Jesse Brown VA right. Medical Center here mm-hmm. in in Chicago, and that turned out to be a tremendous, tremendous hit for right. all of us. Mm-hmm. We are now pursuing Dora Miller Day for Chicago, which is going to be October 12th. We had a resolution introduced to the city council by way of Alderman Brookins of the 21st Ward, which in essence said that Chicago is going to recognize Dora Miller Day, October 12th, which is his 100th birthday. Wow. Through uh, the county board commissioner, Brandon Johnson, he is going to submit the same resolution to have Cook County to recognize Dora Miller Day, October 12th. Through... State Representatives Camille Lilly and LaShawn Ford, Great. we are going to have a resolution presented recognizing Illinois that day to honor him with Dory Miller Day. And it's all a part of developing a groundswell well, right. that we want to be able to walk into D.C. and fulfill the commander statement that he made at, at Jesse Brown that we're not taking no for an answer with this. I'm sure all of these folks did, hopefully, deserved it. But still, there is no question I think anybody could could, could suggest so that uh, Dory Miller certainly deserved it. Our number is 312-374-8130. What else do we need to know? Well, uh, there are some efforts that we are um, putting forth as a post to uh, – get more and more involved in the community. One, we are uh, going to start encouraging veterans to come in to document their uh, military experience with uh, video. I have been able to do that for for about six or seven months as a volunteer over at uh, Jesse Brown. I would go in once a week, stay there for four hours, and invite guys to come and uh, record their story. And I would promote it from a standpoint that you owe this to your next generation to tell your story. I don't care what you did while you were in the military. You need to tell your story. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to revise that and start getting veterans to come in to get more involved with documenting what they did in the military so that it can be passed on for generations to come. Uh, We do have plans this fall to do a a cleanup project, and of course, that ties in with my (laughs) <laughs> you know, my second nature. Um, and if anybody doesn't know Sel, boy, I tell you, he cleans up everything, which is a wonderful thing. Well, it, uh, my effort is, is um, in that area of cleaning up starts from the inside out. We Beautiful. are trying to Beautiful. eliminate that filth of ignorance, first of all, in terms of who we are as a people. That's one of the reasons why we end up being so dirty. We don't really know our true identity. So going for the soul, the mind, and the spirit, first of all, adds to your ability to appreciate your physical environment, maintain it, take care of it, and uh, it will do what it's supposed to do, and that's appreciate and value. Veterans, as you know, Cliff, more so than most, know what clean means. Yeah, that's when, true. Absolutely. That's Regardless true. how far removed we might yep. be from You're that, right. mm-hmm. we know that uh, when they told us to pick up everything that yep. didn't grow they yep. meant it. Elbows and... and, and thank you. Yeah. That's, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> the other is that we're concerned about the way s- some of us are, are leaving without preparing for that final moment. We came here at the expense of somebody else. Somebody else paid for us to come, whether it was the, uh, the midwife who got paid or at a hospital, somebody else paid. But there's no reason for us to allow somebody else to pay for us to get away from here. And that's something that we should be responsible for and not leave that burden on anybody else. It's a, it's, it's a way of just standing up and taking away some of the pain that, that is just a natural spirit at those moments. And it further adds to the grief when there's nothing there to <laughs> get you on to wherever it is that you're supposed to be going to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think veterans, 
so many of us now are in a position to do something like that, and we should be re more responsible than we are. Mm -hmm. And I think it will relieve a lot of the stress on the part of the people who uh, are left to take care of that, those final moments. We're so pleased to be talking to none other than Sal Dunlap, veteran and member of the Dory Miller Post 915. Uh, I'm sure everybody has heard the, the name of Sal Dunlap because he's done so much for so many over the years. But one of the things he does, and of course he's been explaining it as to why he does it, uh, he's Mr. Clean, the real Mr. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clean is really... Uh, You've got nothing on this man. One of the things that he, I got to say, without mentioning the name, you know who I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, yes. this this uh, wonderful lady, who uh, was in government and also religious and right uh, involved in uh, when I say involved in the church, much more than involved. Yes, but called me and asked me they were wanting to have a cleanup program. Did I know anybody who could help because they the block and so forth needed needed a lot. Right. And I said, Yes, I do, I certainly do. She she said, God sent him. Oh. <laughs> God sent him. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um a gorgeous spirit. Yeah. A small church. Yep. But I've told her that it, it's not you know, your effect on people is not based on the how packed your church might be, mm -hmm. but the impact that right. your church is going to have. And, uh, as you know, she's a, uh, extremely qualified in so many areas right. that uh, mm -hmm. I've offered to support her. Yep. All I wanted to do is just identify what it is she wants to do. And I will do my best to aid her in making that, that difference in, in that mm -hmm. little corner of, of heaven that she's trying to build. Mm -hmm. um, I am pursuing a... Um, a tour, a filth tour with the mayor. Actually, what, what kind of tour? Filth. Filth tour. Okay. Filth tour. Oh, filth tour, okay. I want to point out to the mayor, mm -hmm. I know she sees all this trash and debris in our community, mm -hmm. but I want to point out to the mayor from my perspective, this filth, this trash and debris, what it does to us, the impact it has on our children, mm -hmm. walking to school, not knowing mm -hmm. the detriment that is uh, the psychological impact that it's, it's ha it has on them. Uh, my position is well documented and supported now by institutions such as the Center for Disease Control, mm -hmm. the American Medical Association, the University of Pennsylvania, and they're all saying, Cliff, what I have been trying, saying mm -hmm. and doing for some time I now, know, that yeah. living in filth will drive you crazy. <laughs> it will not only determine the quality of life, but it will determine how long you live. Now, this is in the study done by the CDC. Childhood Experiences, Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. And there's no reason for us to talk about doing any type of a study here in Chicago regarding the value and, and, and the impact that cleaning up will do. We just need to implement. Well, I claim to be the best street sweeper, sweeper that Chicago has got. I believe it. I also live up <laughs> to what, argue yeah. That. And you know, Martin Luther King said that if sweeping streets is gonna be your lot, be the best, and I am mm -hmm. Chicago's yep. best mm -hmm. sweet sweeper, but I also live up to the best of my spiritual ability to what Malcolm X said to us, that if we clean up our communities, we'll quit running to other folks' community where we're not wanted. And that's what I'm about. Well, the mayor in her first statement, opening statement said, she was going to make a difference in what the communities look like, what the south and west side look compared to the north side. So help me God. That was when I knew I had her. Because I can describe hell in the form of this trash and debris in our community like no, none other. I want the responsibility of cleaning up certain areas to my satisfaction, and I assure you that you will be pleased, pleasantly pleased. I want to be able to show that cleaning up a, a community will have an impact on the property values, mm -hmm. the crime rate, investments, just your, your peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like living without fear. Fear is there because, you know, that demon of filth is there. When we clean up, faith 
replaces that fear. That's what I'm banking on. Yeah. I'm trying to get the ministers involved. Mm -hmm. First of all, by quit saying cleanliness is next to godliness. That's a damn lie. Cleanliness is godliness, not next to it. Mm -hmm. Being more exact as we approach this, this is a war. And right now, the, the filth is winning. Mm -hmm. It's running us away from each other. It's not just white folk who take off and, and get away from us. We run from each other. And everybody deserves the quality of life that they should have. How much of uh, that, uh, your whole philosophy on that cell came from being in, in the service, in the military? Well, well, I actually went into the military pretty sharp, Cliff. I mean, to the point that my spit shine boots were, you know, they rivaled the, uh, the drill sergeant. <laughs> but they certainly no taught, it. yes, they certainly taught me some, you know, something about structure. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. structure. And uh, while I didn't necessarily appreciate it then, I, I do now. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And however painful it was, it served to benefit me now. I still make hospital corners when I do my bed. <laughs> All right. That's right. I know what you mean. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and, and I clean out my corners real good when I'm cleaning up. You walk into a Walgreens and just look around at the corners. I mean, every damn where. Walk up to the, the cash register. Look down on the floor and see how dirty it is. Just filter. Go over to the ATM machine. And look down on the floor in the corner. See how dirty it is. Look at the carpeting. How filthy it is. Well, we don't have to tolerate that type of mess in our community. And out of being in the, in the, in the military, I think it contributed to my, my interest and desire to fulfill this, this simple responsibility. Sometimes all it takes is time to clean up. Well, you have certainly made a way because everybody knows that uh, when you talk about cleaning up, Sel Dunlap is the person you want to see. I uh, want to get back to make sure everybody understands uh, you're here primarily on yes. the Dory Miller thing. Tell us what more, what more we need to know about that, if you will, Sel. Well, what these dates you gave. We so will, uh, certainly I want everyone to stay in touch with the, the America's Heroes group. We will be uh, providing everyone with information regarding the, uh, the 12th. We're going to have a, a celebration. It's going to be at Jones Armory. Uh, the guest speaker, we would hope to get the likes of uh, Jesse Brown mm -hmm. to come, and uh, who I know is very, very interested in this, this whole issue here. But I also want to be able to recognize Alderman Brookins, who has okay. st mm -hmm. stuck with us from day one on this and Great. pushed it through. And it would be a way for us to really express our appreciation for what he's done. Mm -hmm. We have so many people there at uh, Jesse Brown. Again, we want to recognize them for what they have done to bring us to this point where we are. But also, Cliff, we want to recognize our spiritual drill sergeant. <laughs> I would be uh, very appreciative. All right, man. <laughs> Still, yeah. You're great. Let's take a caller. Uh, Tony, hi. You're on WVON 1690. Uh, hello? Hi, Tony. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say President. Thank you. You know who I'm talking to. President. And I'm going to say this. I was in the military, been there for eight years, and all I remember my drill sergeant say, he will walk in, he'll walk in the bathroom, walk anywhere. He said, this place is not clean. <laughs> he used to take a quarter and put it in the corner. And if that quarter was not moved, he knew it wasn't clean. Mm -hmm. So yes. I'm telling you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's it's real. Yeah, I yeah. know. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to leave you gentlemen alone, because I know you, you're pressed for time. And I, I'm not trying to be negative or nothing. Mm -hmm. I will never be half the man my mama was. Because she <laughs> taught me how to go to... <laughs> she would have been a good drill sergeant. <laughs> I'm oh, going to leave that funny. alone. I'm out, gentlemen. Bye -bye. I love it, Tony. Thank you so much. That's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that before, but I yeah. hadn't heard it lately. I'm yeah. going to be half the man my mama was. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, that was my first time hearing about the quarter. Yeah, yeah. yeah.